This is how you crochet the jasmine stitch or the daisy puff stitch part one. I'm going to start this sample with five foundation puff stitches. To do that, I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to pull out my loop a little bit for the first puff. Now while I'm holding the loops in place on my hook, I want them to be able to travel up and down the hook without losing any of their length. Then I'm going to yarn over and insert my hook into the first chain. Pull up a loop and that makes three. Yarn over, four, insert the hook and pull up another loop, five, yarn over, six, insert the hook, pull up a loop, seven, and then for the eighth one, I'm going to grab that strand of yarn, and then I'm going to yarn over and pull through all seven loops on my hook. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the loop I held on to, and then I'm going to add a single crochet. To finish off my first foundation puff stitch, I'm going to chain one. Now for the second one, I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to pull out my loop, yarn over two, and when I insert my hook, it'll be right there into the center of the single crochet where I pulled all the loops together. Pull up a loop, three, yarn over, four, insert the hook and pull up a loop, five, yarn over, six, insert the hook, pull up a loop, seven, and this time I yarned over first before grabbing the yarn, and then I'm going to pull the yarn through all seven hooks, insert my hook into the strand I held on to, and add one single crochet. Chain one to finish it off. And that's two of them. I'll do five and then I'll post the part two in the comments. This is how you crochet the jasmine stitch or the daisy puff stitch part two. Now I'm going to be working three petals or puffs at a time so make sure you watch part one to understand the background of the puff used here. I'm going to pull out my loop, yarn over for my second loop, insert my hook into the center of the single crochet, pull up a loop three, yarn over four, pull up a loop five, Yarn over six, pull up a loop seven, yarn over eight. So I'm not going to finish here. I'm going to move on to my second gap. I'm going to insert my hook and pull up a loop one, yarn over two, pull up a loop three, yarn over four, pull up a loop five, yarn over six, and then pull up a loop seven and yarn over eight. Now before I move on to my third gap, I'm just going to count my loops real quick and make sure they're all the same size. I'm looking for two sets of eight loops. And if you like these kinds of close-ups, be sure to like and follow because I post them every day. So I'm going to insert my hook into the next gap and pull up a loop. Yarn over two, pull up a loop three, yarn over four, pull up a loop five, yarn over six, pull up a loop seven, now here comes the fun part. I'm going to put my middle finger right here between the yarn and the loops, wrap my yarn around it by yarning over and pulling the yarn through all seven loops on my hook. Then I'm going to insert my hook into the loop I created with my middle finger, push them onto my hook, and then I'm going to give it a gentle tug so that I can have the center of my flower. I don't want it to be a big hole, so I'm going to give it a nice tug. Then I'm going to close my stitch with a single crochet and a chain one. And that's it for part two. Let me know what you think. I'm putting part three in the comments. This is how you crochet the jasmine stitch or the daisy puff stitch part three. For the rest of row two, we're going to be working the exact same way we did in part two. So instead of giving you detailed instructions on how to do the next section, I thought I could give you some tips on how to start your project using this stitch. So the first thing I want to point out is that the last foundation puff stitch is the first puff stitch of, a, of the second row. So whenever you're starting your third row, you're going to want to make just a regular foundation puff stitch with eight loops. Finish that off before starting your sets of three. Then if you want to make a blanket, I would recommend using the hook and the yarn that you plan on using for your blanket and making a practice swatch. This is also known as a gauge swatch and it will help you determine how many foundation stitches you need to start out with. 
For example, I used five foundation puff stitches in this example. But since the fifth one is part of row two, I'm only going to account for four of them. So if this swatch measures four inches and I have four foundation puff stitches, each puff stitch is going to be one inch. And if I want to make a blanket that is 40 inches wide, I would start out with 40 foundation puff stitches plus one puff stitch to start my foundation row. And then finally, if you like these kind of close-up crochet stitch tutorials, be sure to like and follow. I post them every single day on my page. And that's it. Happy hooking!